Well, earlier this morning, Politico magazine dropped a little bit of a morsel from a new book out by Ali Vitale, NBC News correspondent, that looks back on the 2020 Democratic presidential primary. And it includes a quote from Elizabeth Warren, where she said, this is back again in 2020, everyone comes up to me and says, quote, I would vote for you if you had a penis. Now, this obviously has gone viral on Twitter this morning uh, because the quote is where, it's actually where Vitaly ends this excerpt of her new book, which is called Electable, Why America Hasn't Put a Woman in the White House. Um, this, they, she used it to end the excerpt that Politico magazine published from that book. Uh, so it's sort of a dramatic conclusion there. Let me read it again. Elizabeth Warren claims, everyone comes up to me and says, I would vote for you if you had a penis. Ryan, do you believe uh, Elizabeth Warren said this? And if she did say it, which I'm sure she, she did because Ali Vitale sounds like she had it recorded, um, is, is she telling the truth? <laughs> I'm, I have no reason to think she didn't say that. Uh, that's sure. I, I think that's, if that Vitale says she said that, then I'll, I'll go with that. Does everyone come up to her and say that? I think I find that extremely hard to believe. Could some people, you know, is it possible that anybody said that ever? I, uh, maybe somebody said it once. Uh, it just seems like a very strange thing to say to a stranger you know, you're, you, that you walk up to. Uh, it's a little overly familiar, particularly, you know, she she was famous in the 2020 campaign for doing those selfie lines. So she did indeed have, you know, thousands, tens of thousands uh, of, of personal interactions with people. So, you know, probably more than 100,000. I think the number's out there somewhere because the selfies, the selfies are out there. At, at rallies, at her rallies, you would ha she'd be there for hours afterwards taking these selfies. So, yes, she had many, many conversations with people. Did anybody say that? Maybe. I, more likely, you, you would have uh, some people saying to her, I'd vote for you if you're a man. I could see that as a more likely thing that you'd say to a stranger that you're about to take a selfie with. Um, but also, you know, being, you know, on the on the one hand, yes, uh, you know, being being a woman, uh, you know, is seen by some, uh, you know, voters who consider themselves pundits to be a detraction. It's seen by others as as a boost. You know, in twenty eighteen, the the not the kind of median female candidate outperformed the median male candidate in Democratic primaries by a by a couple of points, and so I think attitudes around that are are changing a little bit. But certainly, I think. Those are people who watched Hillary lose in 2016, Democratic voters, and thought that she lost because she was a woman, and are kind of holding, you know, folding that into 2020. Well, yeah, and this is a, what do this you is think? A, you you believe it? Well, no, because she's saying like she, she her quote is exactly everyone comes up to me and says. So obviously she's not implying that literally everybody comes up to her and says that, but she's implying that it happens on some sort of mass scale, that people are coming up to her and saying either directly, I'd vote for you if you had a penis, or I'd vote for you if you were a man, which on its face is just flatly absurd and honestly a smear against voters because they elected Hillary Clinton, the Democratic nominee, in the primary just four years earlier. They voted for a woman. And on top of that, Hillary Clinton won the popular vote in 2016. So it's even beyond just Democratic primary voters. The country as a whole elected a woman in the popular vote. Um, and I think there's a tendency to like dismiss claims like this as just like silly, um, you know, the, the bitter, uh, the bitter sentiments of a losing candidate. I, and it is that. But it, I really take it seriously as a smear against voters because I, I, I really like it, her excuse, if her, if this is her excuse is uh, blaming Ms misogyny and sexism in some significant way. Of course, there's always going to be misogyny and sexism, and we you know, continue to uh, you know, hopefully trend in a direction where it's a lower, lower effect on everyday life. Of course, it's always going to exist. But if you're blaming it for losing a primary that a woman won four years ahead of you, that is a smear on voters, and you are using it as an excuse to salvage your credibility as a failed politician who ran for president. And another thing this article does um, is rehash the Bernie Elizabeth Warren feud. It was similar to how Hillary Clinton invoked and flirted with this invocation of sexism, um, and, and outright in some cases, I think was outright sexist against Bernie bros and men in her ability to 
to smear them or her interest in smearing them as sexist. Um, it gets into some of that as well, and it's easy to forget how big a part that was of the 2020 primary, too. It was the similar kind of uh, battle lines from 2016. It was huge. You know, people remember it was right before the final Iowa debate. Uh, the it looks like the Warren camp camp kind of leaked to uh, CNN that that Sanders had said that she couldn't win because she was a woman. Sanders flatly denied having having said that. Um, you know, more what more likely he may have said something like Trump is going to you know use misogyny against you or something something like that, which is just you know common sense. Of course, of course he's going to do that. Uh, and then it became a, a big, it became a big issue in the debate. And you know, the Sanders campaign saw its its numbers with women, you know, dip significant significantly in the in the two weeks then leading into the Iowa caucuses, which then um, you know narrowed the race to be close enough to allow Pete Buttigieg to do that bizarre thing, the night of the caucuses where he just claimed victory even though uh, the 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 voting machines. Uh, that were actually linked to people in his campaign had had completely crashed, uh, and so it did it did have a, you know a real impact on on the way the race uh, unfolded, though uh, the the massive consolidation ahead of South Carolina you know with with you know Obama, Obama Clyburn, Buddha Judge, uh, Klobuchar, Beto O'Rourke, every MS and MSNBC dumping kind of a billion dollars in, in free media toward Biden, you know probably doesn't. You know, probably is able to wipe out even a even a bigger win in Iowa by Bernie Sanders. But yeah, this is this that was people forget how what a big part that played in the primary. And you know, the the uh, recurring theme is that it's all about power. And when you're weaponizing um, false charges of identity politics for the sake of your own political part for your own political power as a, a powerful uh, member of the political establishment of the American elite, when you weaponize that, it actually has a real effect on the way people see their country. It has a real effect on the way people see their neighbors and their culture. Um, and as this, these things are sort of cynically weaponized by powerful people for the sake of their own power, um, uh, it really changes the world. It really changes the country, and and not for the better. And it does a disservice to uh, you know the the uh, crusade to actually address real misogyny um, and and real sexism and you know real uh, real racism, real xenophobia, real anything. Uh, when you continue to weaponize it in just silly ways uh, as a politician. Yeah, and and to the extent that being a woman is a disadvantage in a Democratic primary, it's it's not because Democratic primary voters are themselves sexist, but it's because they're projecting a view onto the general uh, voting population right. that being a woman will then be a handicap in a general election, uh, and therefore uh, we have to not nominate a, a woman, uh, so so that the uh, these other sexist people. You know, won't won't then vote against that woman, and and some and a, and a decent number of Democratic primary voters did draw that conclusion, you know, from uh, the 2016 election. That yes, they did not. Yes, they did nominate a woman, but then they felt like the the country wasn't ready to elect a, a woman and 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 nominated and, and elected uh, Trump instead, and so you, you end up then behaving in a sexist way uh, in in order to stop other people from behaving in a sexist way. And, and you're, right, you're right, what it does then is it, 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 it then fuels the very thing that you're trying to subvert. Totally, vicious cycle. And uh, you know, Hillary Clinton reportedly said, if you remember, I know you remember the, the Bernie Warren hot mic moment from the primaries. Clinton said, I believed her, Warren, because I know Sanders and I know the kind of things that he says about women and to women, she told me. Uh, this is from Ali Vitale. Her distaste for her 2016 opponent, still palpable. Again, like that is not just that is a smear against Bernie Sanders, <laughs> and it's no surprise coming from Hillary Clinton. Um, but to your point, Ryan, Hillary Clinton was plainly a bad candidate, and uh, to scapegoat um, people like Bernie Sanders, who have have, have supported women for his entire career, uh, basically, um, you know, I'm a conservative. It's not like I'm a big lover of Bernie Sanders. And, uh, I can say that it's true about him, um, but to, to scapegoat either the American people or you know other politicians, um, it's just doing such a disservice to the Democratic Party, who has basically zero constructive introspection about their own flaws. Yeah, right. Yeah, and and like you said, it just it that it then just fuels it even more. But yes, Hillary Clinton's 
um, disdain for Bernie Sanders uh, probably even outpaces her her disdain for Vladimir Putin. Like it's <laughs> it's, it's, it's that it's that deep. Uh, I, I I'd be curious. She, you know, if we can ever get her on the show, we could just ask her. Like, who do you hate more, Bernie Sanders <laughs> or Putin? And I think that uh, there would be a pause as she pondered that that question. Yeah, I don't, oh. think it'd be any, I don't think it'd be any easy answer. You know, how do you how do you compare you know two infinite levels of hatred? Well, you know, the good thing about Vladimir Putin from Hillary Clinton's perspective is that he uh, gives her an excuse to do some favors to her friends in the defense industry <laughs> to, right. to spend some money um, and to uh, gain some control uh, in different parts of the world. So uh, maybe it is truly a very close call for her. <laughs> Might be. <laughs> well, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who like to listen while you're on the go, we're also available anywhere you listen to your podcasts. That does it for us on this rising, this edition of Rising Fridays. Uh, Ryan, we're excited to have you back here in D.C., although I know you're probably enjoying being out of the humidity because uh, this week was pretty rough. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll, be, I'll be back very soon. Uh, look, looking forward to Coming back to coming back to DC and being in the studio, uh, but for now, the, I think that the Marlboro Music Festival is this weekend in Vermont. So if anybody's going to that, um, I'm, I'm hoping to be able to check it out. I've heard it's great, uh, but uh, otherwise, everybody else have a have a great weekend. Ryan will be at the drum circle. <laughs> See you there. <laughs> See you next week, everyone.